just to check that's what they should be doing and they're doing it I don't know what that I think that would have been close to scoreable one eight right there oh he's got a big hematoma or something on him call him lumpy in these lakes you know especially spotted bass lakes when you get big rains the water comes up you get running water coming the backs of these creeks um, you, all you gotta do is just go back to the backs of the creek and um, you know the home it would be a spinner bait this water is actually pretty clear it probably could have done something a little bit different crankbait spinner bait jerk bait whatever but they get in the very backs of these ditches and uh, I don't know if this bite will stay here all week uh, rain's done and gone so the runoffs is going to dwindle uh, so these fish might pull back out but um, that was the very first pocket we've gone into this morning to try it and I got one. So something to possibly run for a while longer and just to see if that's what we want to do. So now I got to work on my active target, get it dialed in too, because I got a brand new boat. Welcome to day one of practice on Lewis Smith Lake. Smith Lake, Alabama, a really big lake, and I'm just gonna kinda grab around this pocket a little bit, and little pockets, get in here to realize how big this pocket is, like, dang it. There's a lot of water on this lake is all I know. Just trying to yeah, figure out a pattern. Really right now, we're in clear water here, so water, the lake's come up probably eight feet in the last week. Um, so I anticipate there to be a shallow bite somewhere usually when the water rises fish move up with it even though that the water has been cold um, or the air temperature has been cold fish are still going to move up with it and uh, so we're just going to kind of get a feel for you know where the bait might be what the, what depth the bait might be in uh, look for some fish around this stuff uh, so just going to look on structure scan for a while and see if something uh, intrigues me um, you know, they just come off the drop there, 30 foot of water, some fish on that. I was looking at 300 feet, hard to see a fish at 300 feet on your uh, structure scan scale. Love this Shamu. So, for looking for fish, I like to be in that, oh, 30 to 60 zone. We're actually seeing fish. Cool something sitting off the side there. spot meaning a spot to fish <laughs> and a spot to bass with the Berkeley Max scent hit worm green pumpkin there's yeah there's more I mean, there's a whole bunch of them out here Nate shake a guy up in Lake Shasta used to kick everybody's butt, a dart head. 
And they got a four inch or six inch straight tail worm and just shaking a worm like this. Midday update. Cameraman Shannon lost my prize gloves of 25 years. Leather, Gore-Tex, unbelievable gloves. They are now gone. I was able to catch a couple of fish on a spot back there. Shaking a max ant and had a couple more bites, so. And every time I do my kill switch, get a few bites. I, it, all the bites so far have been on that shaky head uh, in this area. So keep plugging it around. Just, uh, you know, the fish have been like 20. Uh, I've seen some out to about 30. Um, we're down a lower lake by the dam, so we're just gonna plug around this a little bit longer, but this is not the way I like fishing. I'd rather be running way up the river and winding crankbaits or something on points up there. So that's probably tomorrow's game plan, but today we're just kind of trying to be patient. Maybe that was a squirtable, maybe not. I don't think so. All right, so that fish was on a this was a shallow or flat dock. That fish was maybe an eight foot of water. Um, look for some more flatter stuff. A shaky head. Tell me something about day one practice. For a lake that has one million bass in it, supposedly, which I know it does, Smith Lake has a ton of spotted bass. I struggle today. I think I'll have maybe four squirrels, maybe, you know, a few shorts. Just did not get the bites that I thought I was going to get. So that part. So day one of practice. But the good news is we still have one more day of practice and we're gonna go do something completely different. Maybe get into something that's in my wheelhouse a little bit more. Get up in the river and see what we can find there. This is the last bass Aaron Martin ever caught, so Gary took this picture, gone rings. That's it, bro. Love you, bro. Rough. He was a fish catching machine. Yay! So excited! More cold weather gear. Did you catch a bunch of squirrel bulls yesterday? No. Man, I didn't catch hardly nothing. Three. Four. I caught thirty. Ah, oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear. I mean, I'm not to wish bad luck on anybody. But no, that's all. I'm going to talk to another person. Well, yeah, it just seemed like I mean, I caught probably 30, but they's all like 12 inches. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't that. I don't know. Oh, you can get out there and scope around, throw it one out there where he should be around that herring, and it could be 12 inches long. I'm like, what the hell's that all about? So, <laughs> I don't know. Two 
cranking out on the main point. Huge. But he was where he was supposed to be. Biggins. Not so biggins, but kind of where he was supposed to be, right on the front. Right around this point on this bluff wall, just first as you when you hit it, I thought he was a little bit bigger. Spots tend to do that, make you think they're bigger than they are. He's really he's supposed to be. He's just a little guy though. But but nine for in the back of the pocket here. Nah, I just put it in the pocket. Oh good. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's got a good one. Not, well, I don't know, he might be too close. Hey, you wanna wait and find out? I'll weigh him. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Oh, almost lost my phone. Yeah, I just came in a little pocket, put the jig back in it just now. Oh, uh -huh. one spot? Yeah. And he said he only caught three sporables yesterday. Hey, one eight. Woohoo! Oh, you're golden. Oh, <laughs> I got a score. <laughs> Alright, so we are still up in the river trying to make uh, make something happen up here. I actually just caught a scoreable. Very back of the pocket, flipping a jig. I'm still, you know, points pockets, points pocket. Um, and that's two fish that one was a one seven, one was a one eight, but Maybe that means there is more potential. You just got to hit 100 pockets to catch five. I don't know, but um, but it gave me a little bit of hope that hey, he's gone finally. So it's 11 o'clock and I got my first one in the boat that may have been a scoreable. So we're gonna keep plugging along here and uh, like I said, hit some more points and pockets, hydrate. And this is the first time that this is, has happened in, I think, a month. Oh my gosh. I just got out of a sweater. I didn't even bring like a regular t-shirt. I still got my long johns on. Wow. Thank you. 
non scoreable again. It's like the first like legitimate <laughs> scoreable. Um, I know that one that chased my jig up was not the same fish because that was even close, but spinnerbait way back in the pocket. See that? <laughs> I got a bite. <laughs> to rip my panties off. <laughs> you dummy. Oh, that was a good release. That's... I'm so mad at myself right now for catching that fish. I threw the jig up there and it, it felt like a little one. That's why I kind of threw back there. I said, well, let me... Throw a chatterbait just to see if the bite of chatterbait up there and a bladed jig. Throw the bladed jig up there and catch the biggest one of the day. Dummy, dummy, dummy. Yeah, they don't live back here, bud. They don't catch them back here. Oh. Yeah. 